Let's return to a single trait. Wrinkled seeds versus round seeds. All right, so round seeds are a large W, dominant over wrinkled, which is little w. So a true breeding plant that has round seeds must be homozygous dominant, right? Big W, big W. And a true breeding plant that has wrinkled seeds must be homozygous recessive, little w, little w. We call these the parental lines or the P generation. And when we cross these plants, the round seeds gametes all have a big W allele. The wrinkled seeds gametes all have a little w allele. And that means that the children of the P generation, which we call the F1 generation, F for filial, which is Latin for children, all of these plants have a big W, little w genotype, and they all have round seeds. Now, if we take the plants from the F1 generation and cross them, or in this case, we could allow them to self-fertilize, we get an F2 generation. And importantly, which allele ends up in a gamete from each of these plants is random. So there's a 50% chance that, um, that an F2 individual gets a big W allele from the first parent and a 50% chance they get a big W allele from the second parent, or there's a 50% chance they get a big W allele from the first parent and a 50% chance they get a little w allele from the second parent. There's a 50% chance they get a little w allele from the first parent and a 50% chance they get a big w allele from the second parent. And there's a 50% chance they get a little w allele from both parents, right? And because these events are independent, then we can find the probability of each of these events, uh, the probability of the intersection of these events by just multiplying, right? 50% times 50% is 25%. 50% times 50% is 25%. 25% and 25%. And if we consider the F2 genotypes as the elementary outcomes of this experiment, then sure enough, all of those probabilities add up to 100%, right? And so this is the logic and the probability discussion that a Punnett square simplifies, right? So we can take the two genotypes of the parents and we can write out the possible gamete genotypes and then use a matrix to look at all the possible combinations of those gametes and show us the possible offspring genotypes, right? So if it's big W, little w as one parent, big W, little w as another parent, right? This parent contributes a big W and a little w. This parent contributes a big W and a little w. And then we have our matrix, big W, big W, big W, little w, big W, little w, and little w, little w. And so we look at this Punnett square and we declare all these outcomes are equally probable. But they're only equally probable if these alleles segregate randomly. If there is an equal probability that a gamete will get one allele or the other. And if we know the DNA sequence of these alleles, then we can use modern molecular methods to follow them from the parents to the F1 to the F2 generation. However, we often still don't know what gene is responsible for a Mendelian phenotype. How can we tell 
what proportion of this F2 generation is a heterozygote versus a homozygote. Are these alleles segregating randomly? We will see examples where that is not the case. And so to find out, we can do what's called a test cross. And we can cross an unknown organism with a homozygous recessive. organism, and then the phenotypes of the progeny of this cross represent the genotypes of the, um, of the gametes that are coming from our unknown. And so, for example, if we cross a big W, little w plant with, sorry, if we cross a big W, little w plant with a little w, little w plant, then our Punnett square shows us that 50% of our progeny are big w, little w, which have round seeds, and 50% of our progeny are little w, little w, which have wrinkled seeds. Right? This 50-50 split is the proportion of gametes that are coming from our heterozygote here. 50% of them are big W and 50% of them are little w. Or if we were to cross a homozygote dominant with a homozygote recessive, then all of the offspring are heterozygous. In this case, all of those seeds are round, right? Again, 100% of the gametes that are coming from this individual are contributing a big W allele to the offspring. And so the phenotypic frequencies of the progeny in this case reveal the relative frequencies of the different gametes that are being produced by the unknown parent. So having considered one gene with two alleles like we have here, we'll next consider the segregation and the transmission of two or more genes.